Hello everyone. Welcome to Kubernetes Community Days Bangalore. My name is Prasad and I'll be showcasing Botcube in this talk. A brief introduction about me. My name is Prasad Ganga. I work as tech lead at InfraCloud Technologies. I love working on Kubernetes, Go and open source. I'm also the creator and maintainer of Botcube that we'll be discussing in this talk. Uh, so this is going to be a short talk where, where uh, we'll be discussing what exactly is Botcube and how it helps in uh, different use cases. Uh, yeah, so Botcube is basically a chatbot for your Kubernetes cluster. It helps you monitoring the resource events. It could be resource lifecycle event as well as resource error events. Uh, it also helps you in collaborative debugging. So uh, it, it, it basically, uh, it, it can execute kubectl commands uh, by uh, right from your uh, messaging platform window. So for example, in Slack, you can just uh, add, uh, you can just message botcube and it, it, it can execute commands that you want and it returns response back. So it helps you in uh, collaborative debugging, uh, how we'll, we'll be seeing in the demo. Uh, yeah, so Botcube can be installed in uh, popular uh, messaging platforms like Slack, Teams, Mattermost, Discord, and you'll be see more and more coming in the uh, next releases. Uh, yeah, so Botcube can monitor um, resource, uh, resource events and uh, thanks to Botcube configuration, it provides you a uh, fine-grained configuration where you can filter out um, the events you are really interested in. So you can, um, sorry, you can filter the resources um, you are interested in, the event types, and even the namespaces. Uh, for the update events, you can even filter out uh, the the uh, the field in uh, in which the updates your interested in uh, yeah more information you can you can find on documentation uh, yeah botcube supports some um, botcube has something called filters so on occurrence of every kubernetes event uh, the event goes through chain of botcube filters where uh, botcube performs uh, a few checks and modifies the event if, if uh, required for example, if you talk about inbuilt filters, uh, Botcube has uh, something called uh, image tag checker filter, where it checks uh, if the event uh, of type is of type uh, pod update or pod create, and if the container image has latest tag used. So we all know um, latest tag is not recommended; it's not best practice. So that filter adds recommendation in the message that this image tag should be avoided. Uh, so like that, you can have your own custom checks, uh, uh, which can um, add or remove or modify the event messages as per your need. So Botcube architecture provides you a way to define your own custom filter and inject that in the uh, filter engine uh, in which it will get executed. Cool. Um, yeah, so demo time. Let's. Yeah, let's uh, talk about use cases now. Um, so I'll be talking uh, about Slack only. So Botcube can be integrated with multiple uh, messaging platform, but for the, uh, I will be limiting the scope of demo to Slack only. Uh, so most of the time, I mean, all the time I'll be discussing about Slack, uh, but the same is applicable for different uh, messaging platforms. All right. So. Uh, Botcube installation is two-step process. Basically, you need to first install Botcube app, Botcube Slack app to your Slack workspace. So I'm having this workspace and I have installed Botcube from the official Slack marketplace. And then for your Slack app, um, you have to install um, install the backend for your app. So um, in the Kubernetes cluster, you want to monitor you have to install Botcube backend uh, with the token that you will be getting when you install the Slack app. So it's like your Slack app is communicating directly with your Slack backend um, uh, using standard Slack APIs. So you don't have to worry about 
privacy and security. All right. So I have installed Botcube in such a way, uh, Botcube backend in such a way that uh, the events occurring on staging cluster uh, will be forwarded to staging alerts channel. And um, I have also I have also allowed execution of kubectl commands. Now, uh, with the default permissions, uh, the default permissions that uh, uh, that's it. I mean, if you install Botcube, the default permission it has are read only. So you can only execute commands like uh, get pods, describe logs. Um, we don't allow uh, write commands by default, but if you want, you can obviously modify the cluster rules and Botcube config to add to support additional kubectl commands. All right. So as you can see in this staging alert channel, I have got a few notifications uh, regarding pod failure. So it seems like the pod uh, in Nginx namespace in staging clusters is uh, is failing. All right. So this is how you can get notifications um, about create, delete, and you can obviously configure Botcube to uh, filter out events uh, so that you'll get only the ones you are interested in. All right. Uh, so we'll now see how Botcube can be used for incident management. So this is the failure, for example, we have got, and now we want to uh, triage it, right? So we have created a Slack workflow. Um, so if I add this emoji here, the message gets forwarded to the staging alert stria channel. Now this, this is a private channel and we have configured Botcube to allow kubectl commands in this channel. And uh, you can obviously add the responsible folks here, uh, which, are, which can uh, triage. Now, right from this Slack messaging window, you can now debug this this application failures. So yeah, let's let's uh, uh, let's see how we, how we can do that. So if I have to you know debug the pod failures, I'll, I'll follow the standard um, standard steps. Like I'll first get status of pod, right? Um, so yeah, before that, we need to, we, we will execute what ping command. To just make sure that the backend is working fine, so we have uh, received pong from staging the environment. Uh, it will list all the so if this app is configured with multiple backend backends. Uh, for example, you have staging environment, dev environment, product, production environment. Uh, so you will get pong from all those clusters. Now I want to execute uh, what kubectl get command for example uh, on staging environment cluster. So I'll Instead of kubectl get pods, uh, I'll execute what kube get pods, uh, namespace nginx, and then I'll mention the cluster name because you can have multiple clusters, right? Uh, so yeah, it's clear that it's in it's not in ready state. Um, yeah, let's see if you know if he gets something in the logs. So just like kubectl logs, I'll execute what kube logs, um, nginx. Uh, excuse me. Do I bold? Nginx namespace again. Cluster name is stg env. Uh, I think lo in logging we are, we are not seeing any error. Maybe let's describe the pod and see what 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 exactly we are executing uh, in the readiness probe. So I'll describe. Pod. Again, we just drop this command. We can just copy. All right. Um, if you look at the readiness probe, it's it's uh, checking. It is making sure that the port is 8080, and the port is it is reading from etc config port. And if you see here, the etc config is mounted from config map. Right, so yeah, let's see if uh, what what is the value we are mentioning in the config map. Config map's name is config. Um, Nginx cluster name stg env. All 
All right. Uh, yeah. So. Let's describe the config manner and see the value. Okay, so the port is, uh, someone has updated the port 8081 and we are expecting 8080. So yeah, I mean, we have found the root cause, right? So yeah, this is how, um, what can help you in collaborative, collaborative debugging. Um, now, this is something bonus. You can, so by default, we only allow read-only commands, right? But you can configure botcube to uh, allow write commands as well. For example, patch, uh, you, can, you can configure botcube and botcube clusteral bindings to uh, allow that. So we have given uh, botcube access to execute few write commands like patch and then right from this slack window we can fix this issue. So I'll uh, execute patch command and I'll fix the port. That's it. And then we'll again get status of port. Right, uh, uh, we'll wait for a few seconds to get uh, so that it will pick up the latest uh, config map changes. But yeah, this is how uh, you know you can uh, botcube can be used for collaborative debugging, and um, yeah, helps uh, the. the uh, the, the responsible folks to fix the issue faster. All right. Um, yeah, so let's last time get the status and it's running. We have also got a notification here. All right. Cool. Um, yeah. So you can expect a few interesting things in upcoming releases. Um, yeah, so more built-in filters like cube scan, uh, profiling support to uh, have fine-grained mapping like namespace to particular channel, and um, we are also working on a botcube config builder, which helps you uh, creating botcube config. All right, um, yeah. Did, uh, Feel free to you know explore code. Uh, raise if you have any issues or suggestions, you can raise issues on uh, InfraCloud.io Botcube Git repo. Um, and yeah, uh, if you have any further further um, doubts, you can join our Slack workspace, join.botcube.io. Uh, we will be happy to help you with anything. The documentation and all the installation process, everything can be found on Botcube.io. Cool. Uh, thanks a lot. Um, 